Today I'll show you how to create the essential data for our find the market project. Let's go to server script service and add a script. Name this leader stats. And we're just going to go over the basic leader stats. I already have a video on my channel about leader stats, so feel free to check that out. I will leave it linked in the description if you want more information on leader stats. I will go into it a little bit in this video, but I won't explain all of it. So to get started, we need to get two services, the players service and the collection service. We need the players service to access players.player added. This is the function that we're going to use to add the players data when they join the game. So players equals game colon get service. Open up quotation marks here and it will be players. Next, let's get the collection service. So collection service is game colon get service. And in quotation marks here, we're going to put in the collection service. Now let's do that function I was talking to you about. So when the player joins the game, there is a function automatically called. It's called player added. So players dot player added. It's more of a signal, but we can connect a function to it. So we can use colon connect function. And in here, we're going to pass in the player that joins the game. We'll just call it player. You could do PLR for short, but I will use the full word player. And this is just the player that has joined the game. And in here, we're going to create leader stats. So local leader stats equals instance dot new. It will be a folder and it will be inside of the player. Now, leader stats are basically the data that appear top right of the screen. Again, not getting too much into it. Check out my video on it if you want more details. So then we'll say leader stats dot name equals leader stats and this has to be all lowercase if it's not lowercase then it won't work and then we need a markers folder which is going to hold all of the marker data so local markers folder equals instance dot new folder and it will be inside of the player markers folder dot name equals and i'm going to call this markers and essentially this folder is going to contain a load of boolean values for each marker. So if we've got marker one, marker two, marker three, we're going to have a boolean for each of those. And if that's true, that means we found it. I'll go a bit more in detail shortly. Next, we need a markers found. This will just be the number that we found in the game. This is just so players can see how many they've found compared with others. So local markers found will be in instance.new it'll be an int value inside of the leader stats markers found dot name i will just set it to found and markers found dot value by default is zero but it's defaulted to zero anyway so we don't need that line next let's get all the markers in the game so i will say local markers equals collection service colon get Tagged, and I'm going to pass in here marker. Now, if you're not using markers and you're using, for example, objects, this will be called objects. This will be called object. It's fairly straightforward, really. And this is going to this get tagged will collect every single object in our workspace that has the tag marker. There's a tag icon here. And we can add in the properties and we can add a tag to each object. I'm not going to get into tags right now. We'll talk about it a bit more in the next video. But I also have a video on tag on the collection service. So I'll leave that linked in the description too. But for now, I will move on from it and we'll come back to it again in the next video. Next, we'll say for i, v in i pairs, markers do. Local new marker equals instance dot new. It will be a bool value inside of the markers folder. And new marker dot name will be equal to markers in square brackets i dot name. Now, what is this doing? Well, effectively, this is looping through every single marker in our markers collection that we've just got. So every single object tagged marker in the game. And we're going to create a new Boolean instance inside of the markers folder in the player. And we'll set the name of that instance to the name of the marker we're looping through. So let's just add some comments here. So this creates the leader stats folder. This creates the markers folder. This is the total number of markers found. This gets all the marker objects in the game. 
And this loop down here loops through all the marker objects in the game. And it adds a boolean state inside the player for each marker. And that is it for this script here. For those of you that have seen the old series, you may realize this looks similar to the original code. But there are a couple of important changes. We're now using collection service. I will explain this in more detail in the next video. But essentially, every marker will be tagged as a marker. This tag is used to get all the markers in the game and quickly add them to the player as a bool value. If the bool value is true, that means the player's collected the marker. If it's false, they haven't collected the marker. So while there is no major change to this script, from the next video onwards, you'll notice quite a large difference from the original series due to the migration to collection service, which will work out to be much more efficient in the long run especially when we get to saving and loading data and even collecting the markers. Okay, so the last thing left to do is test that the stat script works. We don't want to write this code, wait till the next video, and then it turns out this doesn't work. So all I'm going to do is, first of all, we'll close this script. I'm just going to go to the workspace and add in a part. I will add in maybe five of these, and I will rename it to, I'll call it A, B, C, D and E, so just different names. And if we now hit test and play, make sure you've got the output window open. Hopefully we don't get any errors, which we don't. So the errors are the big red things you'll get or any yellow orange warnings. We've got found zero up here. And if we open up players and our player name, okay, so it's not added anything to the markers folder. And the reason for that is because we've not tagged them. So select every single part, go to tags in the properties and click add, and we're going to add that marker tag. Make sure this tag you add is spelt the exact same as it is in here, or this will not work. Now, if we hit test and play, go to players, our player name, we see markers folder is populated. We can tell by this icon here, drop this down and we've got A, B, C, D and E, and they're all bool values. We now leave the game, what we could do is maybe add another one and call this F. And if we now hit play, we see that F gets added to the system. And another difference from the original is we used to have a folder named markers and we put all the markers in there. The good thing with this is we could have different groups. So we could group C and D together, B, we could have E in that base plate there, A inside of model and F inside of replicated storage. And even then, if we hit play and go to players, our name, open up the markers folder, they're still all here, even though they're all in different locations, which is amazing if you want to optimize your workspace hierarchy. And if you want to keep an inside of replicated storage and only show them if, for example, the player presses a button, we can then put something in replicated storage and it will still be inside of the player. Anyway, I'll delete all of those because we don't actually need them right now. Let's just make sure they're all deleted by pressing play and make sure there is nothing in here. No, there isn't. Okay, okay, and that is all good. So that's all for this video. Now that we have the basics of the data set up, we can move to implementing a collection system in the next video. Check out our Discord server, which you can find the link to in the description, where we're trying to build a community of future game developers. Thanks for watching and goodbye.